Hello, everybody. This is Elijah of the New Paradigm Toolkit, and I'm speaking to the participants of the Luciel uh, Living Vision Symposium. And I can't be there with you. And it looks so lovely each moment. I'm cringing that I can't be there with you. But I can't really be with anybody. I'm uh, not vaxxed. I don't like wearing masks. Hate me. Or know that a large percentage of the population are like me. And this is the background context of which we are in. And my own politics are that something is going on that is <clears throat> almost inconceivable and it is creating a polarity within our species around those who buy into the narrative and those who don't. So what are we going to do about it? The reason I participated in this little adventure was the intention of the founders look to be for the good of the species and people weren't there for the money those two principles were enough to bring me in and enough for for me to bring some of my work into the world this is the first time my work has come into the world in a professional type manner Everything I've been doing is research and development, a little bit of testing, but it has not seen the world. You are the first. But if I may admit something, at some point, I didn't have a say in how my work was presented. And at some point, this became a problem because I haven't brought my work into the world. <clears throat> Someone else is bringing it in, and it's not going in the manner that I think it will work. And that's just life. There's nothing intentionally bad about it. It's just juggling to try to get different things in to create a certain curriculum so that you can participate in it. It could have been done in a thousand different ways. And I bring this up not really to complain, but more to talk about collective intelligence because we moved from personal growth to group cohesion to collective intelligence and a lot of my work i think is related to that and it's something that our species perhaps hasn't really participated in so we we don't know how to do it we have this incredible info tech we have all these brilliant people and yet here we are still stuck unorganized dealing with insanity and we're still wondering what to do, how to work on teams and how to work on larger communities that the collective intelligence will work together in. In my opinion, you need a shared language reference point in your mind, in everybody's mind, that is the background for the operating system. And these conceptual maps are different from the old paradigm maps. These conceptual maps are mapping the multidimensional universe, the newest sphere. All humans right now are going through a transformation, but we don't know what it is because we're all inside it. To step outside it, to look at us as a whole, you have to get that type of perspective, which means your cognitive system has to go beyond the earth, has to go beyond the solar system, has to connect into a larger reality. Because we're not here by ourselves. If we think we're here by ourselves, mm, missing the boat a bit, right? There's probably billions and trillions of species of beings maybe like us or different from us, but all with consciousness and all participating in their world. And at some point, we're going to come in contact with them. And for the most part, we probably already have. But it's still in the world as well. The government hasn't acknowledged it, so it's not existing. Some of you out there have met other entities. I know. I have. And when you do, you go, ah, 
things ain't like we thought it was. And what I find in anyone who's really pursuing a deep spiritual path, which I'm sure all of you are, you come into other dimensions, you come into other places, you are now in contact with a beautiful spiritual reality. And this world wants to stop that, put frequency fences up that break, stop your access. So even though I, I want to come forth with this thinking system called the inflow matrix, I'm aware that at the human level, there's so much more to interacting than just models in the mind. There's the communication, there's the interaction, there's the jealousies, there's the envy, there's the conflict that happens when people have different ideas about how to do something. And if you're looking at collective intelligence, you're moving from the lone leader at the top to a hive of everyone is a leader at certain points. But you have to understand which context you're in and when a leader can be a leader and when a leader has to go, this has nothing to do with me, you guys figure it out. And so to do so, you know, it's, it's a big can of worms. I don't know how to do it, but I have a structure a framework called a share knowledge community for 144 people that then has an operating system behind it, but it hasn't been done. It's conceptual. It's an idea. And so my participation in this project was from that perspective that I'm a whole systems architect. I'm working on an idea that has been formulated to many, many, many different levels and has many different tools. It's called the New Paradigm Toolkit. It has maps, card sets, game boards, processes, and software. Now, what you have had are a few of the maps, a few of the cards. Software was almost there. So behind the scenes, I was part of the design team putting forth the tools that I had and then <clears throat> the tools were taken, put into a curriculum with other tools, with other ideas. And then that's what you participated in. But from my particular perspective as an inventor, I'm a little bit more attached to uh, the tools and the use of them and what to do with them. This weekend, I have just taken the conscious communication card set for the first time printed set of 20 card sets going out to Saskatchewan. So for me, there's another part of bringing it into the world. And at some point I had to leave as a participant, not from the design team, because I felt that my talents, my skills, the reason I was there was not being utilized. I should be training. I should be teaching. I should be helping in as many ways as I can. And that didn't happen. And I, I'm just bringing forth that everybody participates in these systems where they don't really get to participate at their highest level in their best way. Why? Because of the infrastructure, because of the decision-making processes, because of everything. But it's usually because that we don't create a space for ourselves or other people don't create a space for ourselves to really let our creativity shine and to allow that genius that is within us to come through and it's usually because of some sort of blocks it's usually because of our interaction with other people it's usually because of the context of what has been set up and a lot of group spaces just don't allow the personal space to come through in their genius there's a battle between the individual and the collective all the time i'm representing the individual let's see all is representing the collective in between that are all these other little collectives, but all of us are individuals on the outside at some point. And during this adventure, a number of people decided to leave the ship. We are not ending with what we started with. And that is for so many different reasons. And there's nothing to blame. It's just the way life is. But what happens if we all made it to the end? When someone dropped out, we went to go get them. We cared enough to go 
you know, we're going to find out what went wrong. Because that's what doesn't happen. Someone leaves a ship, eh, they didn't want to be here anywhere and go. Something happened. They might be very hurt. They might be very angry. And whatever happened to them might not be that good. Something slipped through the cracks. Maybe it was intentional. Maybe it wasn't. But if someone feels like they're not treated well, they will leave. And they leave with their value. They leave with everything that they could have done, but didn't. And isn't that part of our greatest sorrow in life, our greatest shadow, not being seen for who we are, not being able to participate in the way we want to? And I'll bet this experience has been maybe the closest, because if it, you went all the way and made it to the end, and I got to say that I didn't, my shadow stopped me. And my shadow stops me every time. Every time I'm close to really connecting to a group or people, something in me, something in them, who comes first? Probably me. My shadow comes in and says, no, I'm not participating. And there's always good reasons. But I had said to myself, I'm committing to the end. I'm making it to the end on this one. Because I have left many things. And I have been kicked out of many things. Because I, I can't participate in the way that normal groups and communities participate. The reason I created all these tools is because of everything I have experienced and everything I see and realizing that we're all insane. We all have a madness because we're not sharing the same inner architecture to conceive of reality together. And then there's all these beliefs in there and blocks and, and things that aren't true. Things from the outside, things from history, things from, you know, from actual entities that have designed that aren't good for you and not good for me. And so we have to clean out our minds. That's why I have a character, Captain Sweep, cleans out the minds. Because if we don't clean out our minds, if we don't create an ideal infrastructure that we then learn to integrate with, we are always going to be lost in the old paradigm. We're always going to be connected to things that aren't true. You want to align with reality. You want to align your mind with reality. You want the conceptual models that connect to the greater parts of the universe, greater parts of spirit. The mind is lost without spirit, but spirit doesn't know where to go if the mind hasn't even identified it. How do we align together? How do we find the connections? And the connections are the values. The connections are the conduits of energy. We connect through cooperation. We connect through love. We connect through integrity. If I know you're going to keep your word and you're not out to get me, you got my trust. You got my trust. The energy field builds. Wow, we're going to do well together. But... Your inner world is different from mine. Your personal space is different from my personal space. But at least we have a languaging to distinguish this space. When we go into the one-on-one -on -one space, just you and me, just you and me. But that's different from the group space. When me and you are in there, all of a sudden, it's just, it's not you and me anymore. It's the team. It's me as a member of a team with you on it. But then in the community space, wow, we're all here together. This is what it's like when we come together. Different from the group space, because group space has a different thinking. It has a different jurisdiction. It has a different context. What group space you are in is what team am I on? What, what other team am I on? What is my family? You look at all the configurations of humans, look at the group space, and then look at the difference with community space. What really is community space? And that's what you're experiencing this weekend. You're moving from the team space into the community space, but you might have your team, but maybe sometimes you don't. Sometimes you're an individual. Sometimes you're an individual in a community space. You're not part of the team. It doesn't mean you've left the community. I don't want to leave, but you create distance when things are occurring that aren't in alignment with your values, aren't in alignment with who you are. There's a clearing conversation 
That clearing conversation is one of the 72 conversations in the convo types. Those conversation types are hugely important to establish the context of the conversation that you're having. If I say I would need a clearing with you, it means something's off. It means something has gone wrong. We're now holding some negative energy. We have some sort of judgment. We're starting to drift. And if we don't have a clearing conversation, if we don't clear it. You say your piece, I say my piece. You listen, I listen. We hear both's perspective and then, oh, okay. Understanding comes in, energy gets cleared, back to good. That's a conversation type. If you don't know that conversation type, all your relationships are gonna be off. If you're not good at that conversation type, all your relationships are probably gonna be off. And deep down, every human being at the core of their being wants good relationships where they connect with love. It's the best thing about being a human, right? But we're not that good at it. And for me, I left the farm, I left the building. I've been so pissed with our society. <coughs> you don't create tools. You don't try to change the world unless deep down you're really pissed off about something. And I admit I am. What's happening right now, what has happened, so outside of my value system. I want to be part of something that is going to do something about it. We can't do it in the old ways. And we can't do it constantly trying to figure something out. I figured something out. Now I have to teach it and find people that are willing to be open enough to go, oh, okay, let's hear what he has to say. People go to universities, get PhDs, they come out with a belief system that is limited. Our current educational system is limited. So it's the, the weirdos, the fringers, the, the ones who said, I'm not in and I'll create something else, who have something, something the group doesn't have and couldn't get. But now that individual has to try to share it with a group such that the group can actually use it that's not an easy thing to do when you're talking about multiple conceptual models, multiple tools, linking into software. It's going to take committed individuals who are willing to constantly be open to doing something new. And my feeling or thought sometimes is maybe it's just the kids, maybe it's just the teens, 20-somethings, even younger. Because by the time you get to my age, things are pretty ingrained. And what I did was constantly toss the salad on my inner workings, which did quite a madness, I must admit. But at some point, it makes more sense when everything starts to work together and you can adjust and refine something that starts to work for you. This is custom designable. You're choosing your values. You learn that you can choose how to program your personal space, how to program your one-on-one -on -one space, how to program your group space, how to program your community space, how to program your sacred space. Those five spaces, the first map is the key to everything. It's fifth dimensional thinking. You're starting with five. The number five and numbers have a huge part of this. And there's a color code. Color coding, programming. This is humans taking artificial intelligence and creating human intelligence with machine intelligence connecting in a good way something which allows our communication to get better and better between us. We need alternative timelines, alternative futures, rather than the ones they put in the movies and the TV shows, which always show some psycho AI in control of some psycho government and the future looks bleak. We need to create alternative futures, which are actually being put into the world through us because we're not here to take over countries. We're not here to uh, participate in any warfare. We're here to help each other out. 
We're here to be loving, peaceful human beings. And the war mentality has to go. There, there's, there's no war to, ha to happen. That's from the past. We now have evolved past that. And part of that is creating a different type of thinking. And part of that is really understanding how to formulate your own thinking system. Something that at some point you choose, you can formulate but there's a reference point to connect to other human beings so that we can do commerce together and we can communicate together. So I have huge gratitude to the LCL team for asking me to participate. They have done an incredible job. And even though I may have been critical during this call, I think we need to be able to criticize the leaders. We need, we need to be able to speak our truth and do so in a way which you know, might create debate, might create negativity, might create whatever it is. But at some point, we both come back to the table and find out, okay, well, how can we participate in a good way? What went wrong? How can we fix it? And I'm certainly open for that. I'm hoping uh, you guys are. And we're entering into a new world. And you are the pioneers. You are the ones who, who stuck it to the end and are going to participate in something that the world perhaps has never seen. And that's exciting. When I was looking at the opening ceremony and I was looking at the pictures, I was, oh my God, what, what beautiful people. These beautiful people are having a beautiful experience. And I'm not there. And I'm not there because of the stupid vax, passports, mandates, and my own stubbornness. Such is life. So, I don't know if I'm gonna send this. Olivier at some point did ask perhaps for a 20 minute video that could have been played, but then I drifted away. And no one came to get me. So I'm making my own. Just so you know, one of my goals this year was to create a shared knowledge community of 144 people. And I think any large group of people could be called a shared knowledge community. They don't have to use the frameworks that I have to define it. Because um, you're sharing knowledge and you're a community. <laughs> But I believe we need a new cell. We need a new organizational structure to co actually co compete with the corporation in the new paradigm. And to basically, we need to build our own new system. And that's, to me, the purpose of everything I'm doing. And um, at some point, I'm hoping that you guys are going to participate in something that I put forward. You may, you may not. But you guys are the first ones to have a chance. I figured within three to five years, there's going to be a thousand shared knowledge communities, 144,000. Go figure, right? So how to do so? You got to figure it out. And uh, in spite of our shadows, thanks for listening. Much love to you all. And uh, hope your dreams come true. You deserve it.